you were playing because you do you mu- do music as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What sort of music are you? Singer, are you on the instruments. What do you? Yeah, what do you so do? I play piano and I play guitar a bit. So nice. mainly mainly piano and singing, and I produce and uh, just all of that stuff. So I'm always doing wedding gigs. Yep. And um, during COVID, of course, they stopped us from doing that unless you were jabbed. So, e- exactly. So I couldn't perform, and I, but my, my me and my friend, we just decided to. Like we were, we just thought it was a violation of human rights and. Mate, I couldn't agree more. Mate, yeah. just do me a favour. Just lift that mouthpiece up a little bit. Yeah. There we go. That's a little bit clearer. But, mate, thank you for taking the time to yeah. come in. As we said before, it took us a couple of attempts to line it up. So I'm really pumped. I haven't been this excited for a conversation in a long time. And that's purely one of the reasons is that I actually don't know anything about you. Um, and I don't mean that by no, any no, offence. It's, cool. it's rather cool. that, yeah, yeah. you know, I just stumbled across your page, you know, a couple of weeks ago and – saw the amazing results that you you've had with your skin and you know got the very brief idea on how you got yourself there and I'm pretty keen for you to share that story um as I think there's a lot of value in it for the listeners and as I said to you through social media made it often it seems like we align a lot in our sort of nutritional paradigms and views so mate tell me a little bit about your your journey and how you found yourself now working within this space yeah so I've had eczema since I was born. Yep. So my parents, they obviously don't, don't know any better, but as most do. So they just relied on the doctor's advice. Yep. So for 23 years, I was just on steroids mm-hmm. and antibiotics and every single Western medicine under the sun. Yep. So they got me doing UV treatment, light therapy, and mm-hmm. it just like it didn't work. Mm-hmm. So for 23 years, I was just covered in eczema and it oscillated between really horrible and okay because sometimes no steroids doubt. would work yeah but so how old were you when you got first put on those topical oh, steroid creams i think i was using them i mean i wasn't sentient yet and yes. i was using them yeah so i can't exactly i don't know the exact time but i was from since i can remember i was using steroids yeah yeah so obviously what happens is it's artificial cortisol mm-hmm. so your body gets dependent on it and just like Drug addiction, I just needed more and more and more. And then, so in terms of concentration, and it just stopped working after a while. Yeah. And then basically I was forced to stop mm-hmm. because it just didn't work. Yeah, so what's the point? Yeah, so what's the point? So yeah. at that point, I just stopped all the medication and then all the photos you see online. And when, when was this when you decided to stop? Yeah, that was 2020. So that was, I was forced to stop. And I just, I mean, at that point, the doctors were saying, you need, you can try Dupixin from here, which is a like, relatively new injection that will cure your... It's not cure. It's, it's suppressed it's the expression. Yeah. yeah, so you're not curing anything. And that's what I found. Like, I'm not anti-science. I've actually... I've got a degree you're in bachelor science. bachelor in science, bachelor don't of science, you? Yes. Yeah, from Melbourne University. So I knew that... Like, every, the more I investigated it, I just realized it wasn't actually addressing the root cause. And people were telling me that the root cause was lying in the gut. Because yep. I was going to this gym in uh, in Paran, actually, just or, um, and the the guy who owns the gym was saying I had eczema, uh, really bad. And a car- he had eczema, or he had he had he eczema. had eczema too. Yeah. Yep. And then he tried a carnivore diet, mm. and it cured him up. So he's just like, what you got to do is just eat meat for thirty days. Just try it. What's and the worst good that that could happen? Yeah. What's the worst that could time? happen? Yeah. And I had all these questions like, is this gonna Am I going to get constipation? Am I going to have heart disease? Am I going to uh, have cancer, prostate cancer? You had these questions or these were questions oh, no. that were people putting well, these, onto these you? Are, everyone has these questions when you're trying an all meat diet because no I, I wasn't just doing a carnival diet. I was doing a lion diet. So that means, a carnival diet means you can have anything from an animal, which includes butter, yep. milk, um, cheese. And I was so just... So you went about as hardcore carnival yeah, as what you could Yeah, it's the most restrictive go. diet there is, yep. I think, on the planet in terms of just... It's just meat, salt and water. Mm. But sometimes I think, you know, in really extreme cases, which obviously you yeah. were in, sometimes we need to do extreme some more extreme things, yeah, things yeah. you know? That's what I thought because the doctors were saying there's no cure for eczema. Mm-hmm. So I was saying maybe there's no cure for eczema because this is all they're offering mm. and people only stay in this arena. What if I... 
do extreme things. So I was already doing extreme things before that. Like I was already subscribing to cold water therapy and mm-hmm. I was doing that every day, diving into the ocean. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in Melbourne, it's freezing. It's pretty cold in yeah, the middle of winter really in cold. that water. Yeah. yeah. So um, I was doing that and I was doing saunas and I was uh, uh, exercising every time I could because I was really itchy and I couldn't sleep. So How did you find the saunas with eczema? Yeah, I mean... When I first started the saunas, I was nervous because the doctors, the first thing they say is Mm. you're heating up your body, which means you're inflaming your skin, which makes it more itchy. And the sweat and the bacteria. It was really hard. 100% I've heard those similar sort of Yeah, it's horrible. It's brutal. Mm. (laughs) It's brutal because you're bleeding and you're weeping and it's a mess all Mm -hmm. over your body. And then you're just aggravating that by going in the the heat. Mm -hmm. But And was that your experience? Well, it was, but at the same time, I really, I, I had, from the research I've done and what people were telling me is that the sauna allows you to excrete toxins from your body through the sweat. And For sure. the science is a bit murky on it, but there's this thing called liposis, which basically the science is saying you're basically allowing you to excrete, excrete all of those toxins. Mm-hmm. So I really wanted to do that because I was already applying all these creams on my body and I felt like from the research I'd done, I've had 23 years of just toxins after toxins, antibiotics, my my gut microbiome was destroyed. I was just really sick. So I I wanted to get all those toxins out. Mm -hmm. And so the way I dealt with it was I did did sauna followed by cold water therapy. So Mm -hmm. I'd be irritated, but then I'd dive into the freezing water after, which would numb my body. And that way, I wouldn't be itchy after. So it was those two in, in conjunction mm-hmm. that stopped me from having like a, an inflamed attack. And did this all coincide at the same time with the shift to the lion diet? Or no, no. were so these was, things this... first and then you started leaning yeah, into Yeah, I that? did that like a year before I even started the, the lion diet. And yep. my, like my sister's all in, like she's really holistic. Like she's, she's uh, 15 years older than I am and she follows you actually and uh, she's just all into this uh, she was telling me doing do the do the um, she was subscribing to an ancestral diet so she was she always sure. ate meat and she ate cheese and butter and she she didn't really she tried veg, like a vegetarian diet didn't work for her mm-hmm. and she was all into cold water therapy and saunas was this just did she have eczema too or was it just no, more no, for her had, general well-being had, yeah she had autoimmune disorders like um, IBS I think that's what it's called. Like the problems with like the gut and digestion. Yeah. So, and it's funny, right? You know, you go to the doctor and they'll give you that IBS term, which is that very broad umbrella, yep. but you're exactly right. Any sort of auto autoimmunity cannot really exist without gut permeability. Yes. So, you know, taking out those inflammatory foods and following that ancestral style diet yeah. has obviously paid some good dividend for yeah, me as well. Yeah, and that's exactly right because like I was I was doing research into that and mm-hmm. the, the leaky gut, yep. the gut of the, the porous, uh, porous nature of the epithelium, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it just made so much sense. Yep. I, I found the book by Paul Teledino called The Carnival Code and he has... This I, I knew you'd be a Paul Saladino fan. Yeah, I yeah. knew you'd be a Paul Saladino yeah. fan. Because yeah. the uh, diet I'm subscribing to now is actually Paul Saladino's um, protocol. His protocol, yeah. yeah. It's called the animal-based diet, which yeah, I sure. have fruit added in. Mm. Because on a carnivore diet, you need 70% macros of fat. Mm-hmm. Like you need to get your cheese, butter, dairy in there to get enough fat to protein ratios of three to one. And I just, I can't deal with eggs. I can't deal with... Butter, cheese, I'm allergic to all of them. They all yep. inflame me. So I wasn't getting enough fat. So Which I- is quite common for a lot of people, you know. I think, you know, we are all uh, told about, you know, the wonderful benefits, nutritional benefits of, of eggs. However, there is still the echoes of the lie where people tell you that, you know, you want to avoid the egg yolks because the cholesterol is bad. Yeah. But the, in my experience, whether it be through... Uh, just symptomatic response or whether it be through things like IgG and IgA sort of gut... Pa- panels that eggs are quite common to cause inflammation, irritation and inflammation in for people's uh, yeah. digestion for sure yeah so like you know i'm happy to try organic eggs like when i went to the philippines i had so many because my i'm half filipino half australian mm-hmm. so my mom who lived in the philippines like all of this foods like fresh produce no pesticides so i actually mm. had so much fruit i had so much fish i had um eggs and i was fine so yeah. it's I think it's a, it's a, it's to do with the pesticides here and the way it's produced as well. For sure, it's the same. The w- wheat's the best example of that. How wheat's just not the same in the Western world as what you get you know, right. in, in Europe because of the the gluten and the uh, yeah. and the um, glyphosate. 
That's that's right, exactly. Mm. During um, 2000, 2010, you can see graphs have just gone like this where gluten intolerances just increase because mm -hmm. the amount they spray in gly um, glyphosate is just increased. But yeah. Wild. So I was trying, yeah, the cold water therapy and the sauna mm -hmm. a year before I started the carnivore diet. Did that bring you any improvements? Uh, Alone? It wasn't enough. Yep. It, I needed, because I was still eating a standard diet. So. And when you describe a standard diet, well, without being presumptuous, please tell me about what that standard diet was. Yes, I wasn't eating actually any KFC junk food. I was actually eating what I thought was a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. So I was having a lot of vegetables, spinach, like okra. Um, What's okra? It's like a member of the brassica family, like bro broccoli. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just this long shaped vegetable. Right. Not broccolini. No, not the, I, I don't think so. Maybe we've just got different names for it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah anyway, so sorry. Okra, broccoli, and like Brussels sprouts. I was eating all of those. Mm -hmm. And I and in the morning, I had like oats. I was having oatmeal, like porridge, and basically everything that I thought was healthy. Yep. Um, I had a lot of turmeric. Yep. So then, yeah, I... I got the, the memo from this guy who owned the gym, say, just try the, the lion diet. And, mm. that's and I imagine at this it. point in time, you would have been uh, pretty much ready to try anything. Oh, like, let me tell you. Yeah. I was trying everything. Mm. Like people were calling me crazy for trying things that just are left of center. And I want to get into that more with you as this conversation goes on. But I, I just... The thing that really struck me about you and your page immediately was, how do I even put this into words? Just a huge amount of, like I could feel it in, in my gut right there, just a, just an appreciation for the courage that you've obviously had to put yourself on display like that because Thanks, um, it's very brave and I can empathize given that like a lot of teenage kids, I, I had my own wrestles with my skin, whether that be with acne or whether it be, we, I also had, um, you know, dry, eczema type skin and have even had a few bouts of um, what dermatologists described as tinea vesicola as well, which was like a fungal, which is quite uh, common in people that are sweating or in warm climates all the time and what it can do is is a, is affect your pigment and you know with my hindsight now and my experiences in my you know field of knowledge um i can reflect on the information that i was handed by the dermatologists and see how i was really poorly mishandled as well but the point that i'm getting to is just i understand how self-conscious i felt when i was going through those things and I understand how it wasn't just self-consciousness, but it it really f overlapped into my entire sense of self-worth and confidence as a person. And it was really difficult. And in comparison to, you know, the severity of what your eczema had reached, it is just astonishing to see your results yeah. and um, just see your yeah. energy, man. So like, it's amazing yeah there's multiple layers of that i mean like mm. self-worth issues i was also doing experiments on my own body mm -hmm. in a sense and so my parents, which speaks to the desperation yeah, to fix it my parents were concerned like i don't think this is healthy just eating meat mm. and I'm like i shared those concerns as well i mean that's why i still had i like michaela peterson supplements with with uh calcium magnesium potassium mm -hmm. uh, and i didn't want to take synthetic supplements because mm -hmm. i just wanted to go all natural mm -hmm. so i still had coconuts like five percent of the time nice. and i had uh raw honey every time i had cramps because i had these awful cramps which was so intense i felt like i was having a hernia i've got no doubt that some of the were those cramps like digestive cramps no i think it was muscle cramps muscle cramps okay yeah so like after working out like i've been working out since i was a teenager but after doing sit-ups like it just felt like I, I ended up getting like ultrasounds because I thought it was a hernia. Wow. It felt like you could literally see like my, um, and this might be discouraging for people starting the lion no, diet, no. but like you, you could see like it was um, this misformed, like you could actually see something sticking out. And I thought, is that my intestines? But it was just a muscle cramp, like an intense one. So I In the abdominal region? Yeah, just right here. 
And anyone who's had a cramp in the abdominals, I've probably had one or two in my life. It's up there. Yeah. It's up there. <laughs> but then again, my mum was like, you know, that actually happened to me too. It's a, it's like, it's genetically, I think you've inherited it from me. Right. So she said, I, I, I didn't, have, I never wanted to get operated on it. So she's like, just stretch a bit and we'll go back into place. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it's yeah. been fairly resolved it was, since. It's been fairly resolved, but like, that's not, that wasn't an issue. It mm. was the fact that I wasn't having enough electrolytes. Yeah. And I wasn't having enough. Yeah. So I had raw honey and I reintroduced those coconuts. So I learned the hard way pretty quickly mm -hmm. that I need those electrolytes. Mm -hmm. I need to balance potassium with sodium in a ratio of three to one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so all of those things and potassium is in coconut. So I had that and it went away. Yeah. So, but yeah, the, the whole self-worth thing, it was really difficult. Like mm -hmm. I remember walking on the beach and these people were looking at my feet and they were like, you shouldn't be like, they were just like, that's so gross. Other people I was teaching, they were saying, why don't you wear gloves? Because like, it's horrible. Like, like we, I don't, I, they were basically inferring we we shouldn't be able to have to see that. You should cover it up. Wow. So I I get it. Um, there was multiple things I was dealing with, like just trying to keep my mind buoyant the whole time, mm -hmm. like not sink into into depression. Um, I was I changed career paths. I was considering computer software. Like I did a six month degree in um, programming mm -hmm. because I didn't want to see people anymore. I just wanted to work from home. Makes sense. Um, I didn't want to leave my room. Uh there's, yeah, so um, keeping buoyant, not depression, um, changing my career path, self-worth issues. I mean, but the ho along the whole way, I always had this delusional quality that I felt like it was never always going to be this way. I, w I always felt like I was going to find an answer. Like, I don't know, you, you look at um, biographies, biographies of Bon Jovi when he's young and he says, I just knew I was going to be famous. Yeah, right. So for me, it was like, I just knew I wasn't going to have eczema for the rest of my life. Mm. And I can't explain why, but I, I just say it's this delusional quality where I just knew I had to keep trying until I found something. Mm -hmm. Even if 99% of doctors said, it's not possible. I just But that's knew, it, you weren't willing to accept that. I wasn't willing prognosis. to accept that, yeah. yeah. I really wanted to find something. And I felt like the re only reason why it's, they say it's not possible is because people aren't trying and hard enough. And I wanted to find the answer. So yeah, I was doing cold water therapy. I was doing saunas. My sister believes in this ionized water called Kangen water. So very expensive. I bought that. Mm -hmm. I tried that. So I'm still drinking that to this day. Um, but it wasn't until I found the lion diet that mm -hmm. it really worked for me. Yeah. yeah. So when you had sort of discovered uh, the lion diet... How did you find the transition of actually putting this into practice? Because as you said, it's very restrictive and whether it be you or whether it be anyone, often making shifts with your you know, relationship with food come with a bit of difficulty. Did you just flick and you went 100% all in line yeah, diet from the yeah. get-go? Some people... But, but again, prep. it speaks to your readiness of... To yeah. do anything. Yeah. So some people food prep and I, I just started that day. <laughs> I just yeah. went to Safeway and bought all this meat. Yeah. And I'm like, this is it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And from that point of when you made that decision to do so, how long did it take for you to see results? Was there, you know, you spoke about things like the abdominal cramp. What sort of hurdles or discoveries were unveiled through that transition? Yeah, so two weeks I started to see results. Like I could start. Wow, that's so quick. I could start sleeping again, basically. But it mm. was it took a hundred days to cure completely. Yep. That was like fourteen weeks. So, I mean, I started that day because I just I wanted to learn as I was doing it. Yep. So, like it was, I it was a process of like. I learned the hard way through the cramps, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I was reading Paul Saladino's book, mm -hmm. and I was learning about exactly what I needed to do, like make sure I wasn't going to die of rabbit starvation, protein poisoning mm -hmm. by not having enough fat. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, if I'm not having any cheese, how do I get enough fat? How does Michaela Peterson do this? And as she says, it's a gray area. So there's all these factors to consider, but I just went straight into it. So what did the diet, what does the diet, typical diet look like for you now? Are yeah. you having a combination of, you know, higher fat, uh, you know, ground beef yeah, well, variations? Yeah, because I don't have the 70% fat macros, I introduced carbohydrates in the form of 
fruit. Yeah. Because that's what my body is like. That's the key that fits my body. Mm -hmm. Like every person's different. Like they can handle cheese and butter, but I can't. Yeah. And so that's the food that works with me the best. And I think you people need to discover that for themselves, you know, and sometimes the best way, uh, I think for people to be able to discover what, what does work for them is that they have to go through a period of abstinence from those foods and then reintroduce yeah. them. It's, it's a story that I've regurgitated a number of times and when I take on clients and, you know, oatmeal is one of the prime examples because it's a very commonly uh, consumed breakfast food, breakfast mm. food, in yeah. inverted commas there. And then, you know, we get them to go through a four to six pe week period without consuming oatmeal. And then when it goes back in, which it eventually will when they break from their, their diet, they get a very inflammatory response, whether that be in bloating, whether it be digestive irritability, whether it be with, you know, brain fog and, and sluggish mood. And I've had people even say, wow, you, you've given me a food sensitivity. I'm like, no, what's happened is you're just, you, your intuition and understanding of what's normal is back to a healthy level before you were operating at such a suboptimal par of, of living that you just didn't have that communication between your gut and the brain. And you, you, this was, this was your baseline of yeah. normal and they yeah. now actually can kind of differentiate between the two. Yeah. Yeah. The gut brain axis is a real thing too. Mm. Like, um, Jordan Peterson is on all the steak diet and yep. he's decreased depression, anxiety just decreased. And they had, they had studies of severing the vagus nerve, which connects the stomach to the brain and basically Parkinson's disease with the people who had Parkinson's disease it actually started to lower because they're not, they're no longer being inflamed by the food they're eating. So, and yeah, the elimination diet sense as well. So I was, that's, that's the imperative thing about it. You mm -hmm. don't know what's inflaming your skin. And so you want a period of just cutting everything down to the simplest, most smallest subset of food. Mm. And then it, once you're healed, you can then start reintroducing the foods again. You can't have too many variables, right? Yeah, Otherwise you don't that's know right. you don't what know. it is that's actually that's right. know, doing the magic or doing the harm. Yeah. And so I knew I wasn't affected by meat. And that's why I just restricted it down to that. Mm -hmm. Whereas I was talking about Paul Saladino before. He has this thing called the plant toxicity spectrum. I've heard that is defense chemicals. Yeah, and defense chemicals. They don't want to be eaten. That's yeah. right. So legumes, nuts are the highest. Yeah. So I was already allergic to both legumes and nuts as a kid. So for those that are listening, let's give them a little bit of context for what sort of foods are in, in legumes. Oh, so beans. Yeah. Mainly beans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, legumes, yeah. Nuts. And so I was allergic to beans and nuts as a kid. So mm -hmm. I was like, that makes sense. Yep. Because they're the most toxic in anti-nutrients mm -hmm. so yeah that's why i still eat fruit to this day and again for people that are listening i think what, what we're talking about in anti-nutrients is that yes we have been told that vegetables are good for us and and i'm a big fan of paul saladino as well um and i think everything you know especially on social media requires context and for a lot of people that you know, are in relatively good health and aren't suffering with autoimmunity or any gut permeability, I'm not going to go as far as to say, hey, you shouldn't be eating your vegetables. Exactly. My, my message around vegetables is definitely one that aligns with quality because if we're looking at um, eating vegetables from a nutritional motivation, then I would be arguing, well, firstly, we get a lot more micronutrient density in meats itself than any vegetable and on top of that if you're buying it from a uh, big chain supermarket the chances are that was pulled out of the ground a month ago and the reason why it hasn't been rotted yet is because of all these chemicals and things that it has been sprayed for so especially when it comes to fruits and vegetables they are far more absorbent of these i suppose dangerous chemicals and don't have have any um i suppose detoxifying ingredients in them whereas protein in a sense, has the amino acids which form as the building blocks for conjugation to help with detoxification in the process. So vegetables are definitely king, but to our point of defense chemicals is that there are uh, anti-nutrient properties in some vegetables that somewhat deplete other cofactors like magnesium and, you know, very important stuff for our enzymatic reactions in the body. Yeah. Um, another carnival doctor, his name's Dr. Kiltz. Mm -hmm. He talks about he cites this study which says 99.99% .99 of all pesticides come naturally in the vegetable itself. Mm. 
So it's just their way. I've not heard that. That's cool. Yeah, it's just the way that the vegetable defends itself. Yeah. Because there's le- it makes sense evolutionary wise. Mm-hmm. The plant wants you to eat the fruit. That's why there's less anti nutrients in it. It doesn't mm-hmm. want you eating the foliage, the leaves. That's why there's more defense chemicals. So mm-hmm. there's this. Uh, people can understand that animals have a fight or flight response. They can fight you or, or run away, but plants can't do that. So mm-hmm. the way they do that is by poisoning you with chemicals. And broccoli does it in this one way. So there's two chemicals, myrosinase, glucoraphanin, for example. And they, they're two separate, in two separate compartments. And mm-hmm. when you eat it, they combine as a, they call it a phytoalexin. And that's the, the way it attacks you because it's too toxic when they combine, they form a chemical called sephorophane. And that sephorophane is too toxic for the plant itself. It'll poison the broccoli. But when it's, it's made so that when you eat it, it will attack your gut. Mm. And so many people, of course, there's nutrient benefits to vegetables. But for many people like me, the anti-nutrients, mm. like this sephorophane, eclipses the nutrient benefits. And so there's no point of eating the vegetable because I get more sick from eating vegetables than I do the nutrient benefits. And do you think that's something that's specific to you or yeah, everybody? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's not everyone mm. because other people... Because I've heard, for example, I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Rhonda Patrick. No, Maybe I haven't she, heard that she, one. She's massive on sauna. So she's probably a resource you'd really enjoy. But okay. she, she has... Um, the first time I ever heard about broccoli sprouts and sulforaphane was was from her okay. and some of the benefits. But yeah, either, yeah, either cool. way, interesting. Yeah, so I wouldn't say everyone needs to stop eating vegetables because no. it's about what your microbiome can handle. Like everyone's unique. That's it. And the point is if you have symptoms of, you know, bloating is probably the most common one. People need to understand that fiber ferments. That's right. Fiber ferments and it causes bloating and slows down transit time. So if you're somebody who's, you know, taking a shit twice a week, you're probably going to do a lot better with a lot less fiber and less vegetables. Yeah. You know, we we talked about it before about um, you are worried about constipation. You mentioned it. And uh, there have been some studies done that, you know, out of I, I can't remember the number of subjects in the study, but it, it had a hundred percent strike rate for curing uh, constipation. I've read that one. With the carnivore yeah. diet. Yeah, they had they had three groups where um, one was having no fiber, small amounts of fiber, and uh, eating normal yep. amounts of fiber. And basically, everyone who they were all constipated, and mm-hmm. the people who ate fiber, their constipation remained. Yep. But those who eliminated reduced. all fiber, all their constipation was completely not just reduced all cured 100 percent, as you said yeah it's wild so it's really wild and then the the conclusion of that study is it's like a traffic jam mm. if a traffic jam is your constipation on the highway yeah so why would you be adding more cars which is fiber mm. um to alleviate the traffic jam obviously you want to cut down your fiber intake so so you have less cars mm-hmm. and it makes sense yeah it's a good way to put it <laughs> yeah so, mate, how, you, you started to see results in two weeks. Yeah. Well, when I, I say before, two weeks, I could start sleeping. Yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you started, to, you started to see and experience some of the benefit of your decisions nutritionally. Yeah. Now, I said to you when you walked in, your skin's looking amazing now. How long has that taken? You started in 2020. Well, I started 2020, June 22nd, and then... The date, I love it. Yeah, I know, I know the exact the date. Exact date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, you know... The historical date in my life where oh, I mate, was starting here. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I respect that. That's um, but yeah, that's when I started. And then around October, I was making my first reel of This Healed Me because I, w- I just wanted to show people like this. So I, I was on these ex- In October. So it took you three, four months. Yeah, like um, 14 weeks. So what, um, around October. Yeah. So I was, I was still part of all these eczema channels, um, Australia eczema communities. Yeah. And Every single post is like kids screaming, kids covering in eczema, their life's horrible. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, these people are going to go through the 23 years of suffering that I went through. Yeah. And I just wanted to scream it from the rooftops. Like I did this in a hundred days. Yeah. (laughs) Please like entertain this. Yeah. But I mean, it's obviously hard to prove anything online. It's like, oh, this is guys just on the internet. Right. And I've seen, um, I've seen some of the backlash. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're always going to get some haters and some people that are threatened by your positive outcome because it's not It's science. not official. It's not the official narrative. Yeah, and, and yeah, people don't necessarily understand the way the science actually works and the delay that things actually take to sort of, you know, 
hit the uh, the peer reviewed research and actually make it into medical school and and all of these factors that there is there is a big 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 delay by it and you know I don't want to get too conspiracy in this yeah, conversation exactly. today but when we start to understand the way that uh, big food corporations operate and that the they're owned by the same people that own the pharmaceutical companies and they're putting the five-star health ratings on the, the gluten-ridden breakfast that's causing the permeability and the autoimmune disease, so which true. is then managed by the pharmaceutical companies and the topical steroids. Yeah. You can start to see how this results in, in big business and I don't believe... Don't get me wrong. Medicine... Western medicine has done a lot of great things for a lot of great people and I say all the time that, you know... I'm very fortunate that I've had Western medicine accessible for me through certain injuries and periods of trauma and, um, you know, I've needed it. But I think when it comes to uh, chronic disease and management of health, the system is definitely failing and it needs people that are, are, are taking a sidestep out of that field where they're not governed to be free to speak and share their stories like you, like me and like uh, many other people because... You know, there's there there are certain things I, I like I like to nerd out on the science as well, but there are certain things I don't need to see a research paper for because it worked. Yeah. I feel better. You know what I mean? There is the clues are there. Yeah, the worrying thing about I mean I'm all for medicine too. Yeah. Like the, the worrying thing about it is that they're just very quick to prescribe drugs, mm -hmm. and as Paul Saladino says, it's like. Medicine or medical school is just about matching your illness to the drug you can take. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a friend who's studying medicine right now yep. and she suffered from ADHD mm -hmm. and she was then, uh, she was asking her doctor, I want to come off these tablets. I don't want to be on them for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And then he said, you know what you need? You need antidepressants. So yep. it's, and, and straight away she was like, oh, like this is like an alarm went off. Like this is not something, isn't that a bit too quick to prescribe drugs? For sure. It was the same thing with me with uh, like when the steroids stopped working and I was already disillusioned at that point that I, I really didn't want to have more medicine for the rest of my life. Yeah. They were saying, yeah, try to pick it. And I considered it because I could, I could see these people that are being healed. But if it was just, if it was just one injection, then I would consider it. But the thing is it's two per month. And it's 24 per year for 480. It just feels a little years. bit like it's putting like, the cart before the horse. Yeah, it's just, I'm going to be dependent on this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And then I had friends who were saying, look, your immune system is attacking itself. Like some people's immune systems are hyperactive and some people just can't survive without drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's you. And I said, in my mind, I'm like, that's bullshit. Yeah. I, I really don't believe that. Especially when you've seen the increase of these kinds of um, issues aligning with sort of the mass changes to modernity. You know what I mean? Yeah. In terms oh, of like, you mean like, like the increase seen, in autoimmune seen, disorders? Yes. One in five now. Yeah, of course. Yeah. With then the increase of, um, you know, mass agriculture and all these kind of changes to our living environments and the way that we consume our foods. And, you know, to your point about your friend with the medications, like it does, it still baffles me, you know, like a good example of it is like the contraceptive pill. Like more than 50% of women that are on the contraceptive pill are on it for their skin. There you go. And it's like, well, doesn't that trigger a thought process that you're taking a drug that fucks with your reproductive organs and systems f to fix your skin when that's not what the drug was designed for? And the way that that works really is because it blocks uh, sebum, which is the oil that the skin produces, which creates cystic acne. Wow. Right. So then when they come off the pill, then they obviously, and that's one of the hesitations women have a lot of time getting off the pill is that they know they're going to get a big skin outbreak. Yeah. You know, but again, we, we know that there's the gut and the skin axis, the skin, the outer skin is a reflection of the inner skin's health, yeah. I like to say. And it is, it's the biggest organ. It's just the only one that we have visibility of. And it is, it's giving us feedback as to something greater that is going on internally. Another one that I like to uh, always bring reference to and laugh at is that Viagra yeah. was an accident. Because it was, it was a measure heart. Exactly. Yeah. It, was a, it was a blood blood pressure medication. And um, the side effect was that it was giving blokes erections. And, <laughs> and now that's how it became famous. Yeah. yeah. You know? Crazy, huh? Yeah. It's scary. Like, why would you want to depend on something to make your skin better? Like, I, I just found that whole depixent and... The um the pill contraceptive, it's kind of it's kind of scary knowing that you have to stay on this medication, otherwise, 
the moment you get off it, you'll just break out. Yeah, you're in prison to it. You're in prison you? to it. You're dependent on it. Yeah, mm, which has to have sort of like a systemic sort of flow and effect to just the way that you're living. Yeah, your life. And and not to go into conspiracy, but as you said before, like people who are just constantly dependent on drugs. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. Mm. And um, and unfortunately, it's that's the normality for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, especially there's like the statistics: sixty seven percent of people are obese or overweight in Australia, which means yeah. that they're suffering with some sort of autoimmunity, metabolic dysfunction, and disease. Yeah. You know, mate. Um, so we've spoken a lot about what, obviously what you've done nutritionally. Mm. Um. Did you do anything topically? Like applying on my skin? Yeah. Like oils? Uh, no. My skincare is completely diet. Wow. Yeah. That's because, uh, you know, I've seen and, and worked with clients in the past that have had uh, some skin issues and, and we look at trying to help the acidity of their skin because when the alkaline's too, when the skin's too alkaline, the bacteria that's allowing, I suppose, some of the eczema to exist can be, I suppose, flourishing. Mm. Um, and then using something like a biofilm agent like um, colloidal silver to actually break that down so we can address the, uh, I guess, the bacteria and then, you know, using very natural sort of um, concoctions of things like gotcha cola and um, natural remedies to sort of soothe and really heal the skin. But the fact that you haven't had to use any of that despite how extreme it is just, again, speaks volumes to the power of obviously nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> I've got an um, interesting story about silver. Um, when you, I was saying before, like mm. I tried so many things because I was already open to. I'd spent twenty three years in the arena of Western medicine. So yeah, I was. I was just trying things outside of that, and I was subscribing to doctors like Doctor McCullough, um, all of these doctors who were talking about the toxicity in our environment. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I noticed, like it's going to sound a bit crazy, but oh. um. In 2020 was when I broke out. And at the time, 5G towers came out. No. So in my mind, I started doing research on the 5G and one of the symptoms was dryness in skin and increased. Like one of the people have like hypersensitivity. There, there is a hypersensitivity symptom with 5G. Some people get migraines, they get very sick. And so one of them was dryness of skin. Yep. So I thought, what if there's a correlation? So what I did was, I, I'm a physics student. I, I studied physics in Melbourne Uni and the first thing they teach you is mm -hmm. Faraday cages. So just like, I don't know, a microwave in the movie with Edward Snowden, he puts his phone in the microwave because it's a Faraday cage and, and then they can't hear him in the movie, yep. which was the true story. So it's the same principle. If you wrap your phone with aluminium foil, it'll stop ringing. Mm -hmm. So... I basically insulated my bed, which is, it's not something that's new. It's a lot of people actually do this. Um, I insulated my bed with this silver uh, and it was, I functioned as a Faraday cage and basically you go inside and there was no radiation at all. Yeah. And I had, my dad and I both tried it and we had the best sleeps. Like you sleep, so, like you feel like you're in the, like in a camp outside in the country. Cause Mate, I don't just... think that's crazy. I do the same, and not not to that extent with the silver. But you know, I'm uh, you know Wi-Fi off at turn on the Wi-Fi off at night. Yeah, and uh, you know, phones on airplane mode, out of the bedroom, doing yeah. as much as you can to to eliminate those electromagnetic fields because they can. They definitely can disrupt sleep. And yeah, you know. Um, Something about me is, you know, in, in that same very similar time time frame, mate, I got diagnosed with testicular cancer oh, no. and I lost my right testicle in, um, in 2020. Wow. And Sorry I used to, to that's all right. I'm, I'm fit. I'm fighting. I'm doing well. So we got onto it pretty early, but I used to, um, have my phone in my right pocket. Yeah. My phone's the there right now. I should Get it out. out. Get it out. It's not good, is it? <laughs> no. And, and I know mean, women have it here as well. It's very strange, man. I used to have this just. You, it's so crazy how you just have these feelings, that intuition. And I was just like, just, I used to get irky at myself that my phone was there, just knowing about it, and I'd yeah. throw it away. And um, maybe a little bit too late. But I don't think by any means I'm not going to go as far and say, hey, this was the reason why, because you'll never actually know. You never know that exact but, reason. Yeah. But I firmly believe that it is one of the contributing factors to what created that perfect storm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what. Yeah, it's amazing. That's what I was doing. I had the I had the silver surrounding my bed, and it worked. As I said, so like it, it worked in the sense that my sleeps were so much richer. Mm -hmm. I felt better. But the thing was, I actually 
was allergic to silver. Oh, <laughs> and so I learned that the hard way and right. I just broke out in this horrible contact dermatitis. So I tried the same thing again with aluminium and it seemed to work. I was doing that for a while, but I wasn't sure if it was, if the inflammation was being caused by the aluminium because I was, it wasn't affecting me, but it wasn't healing me either. Yeah. So it was deeper, it was diet. Yeah. So I ended up scrapping it and I don't use a Faraday cage anymore, but that's... But I certainly don't think there's any harm in with these kinds of issues yeah. that are coming at it from a very holistic, well, full-rounded sort of approach it is going to pay its dividend. You know, like I'm immediately thinking of, uh, um, you just reminded me of, have you seen the earthing mattresses, the underlays? Yeah, I've heard. I've heard of it. Like, I've but, heard but, but you understand about earthing and grounding, um, oxidative stress and yeah. grounding exactly. Yeah. So I, gr- you- I ground. I go to the beach like every second day now, and I go into the ocean not just because of cold water therapy and the rejuvenation of the salt in the water, but the cortisol but, but, regulation. Yeah, but also grounding. I love just you know walking barefoot on the on the beach. Yeah, people don't understand. It's no coincidence that you're feeling more relaxed just because you're at the beach. It's yeah. nice, but there's there's some other physiological things going on um yeah. but yeah you can get earthing um underlays for your bed that actually then go into the power point which isn't then on but it runs oh that's red, amazing it runs in the opposite direction and yeah, um, is it i've heard stories of people when they've uh you know if, if you have a lot of oxidative stress and that you, you can temper with i guess the pace of how it's drawing out and that if it is too aggressive for somebody too soon it can actually be a little bit painful yeah to begin with but that's awesome i don't know yeah people were telling me while i was because I was obviously I was trying every single thing I could outside of Western medicine to get myself healed. Because I was thinking it's the toxicity in the environment, which it is a contributing factor. Mm-hmm. Like it all adds up. Yep. Like Wi-Fi, the, the GM, not GMO foods, but like the pesticides it's in the, the pesticides, food. Yep. And um, like even the water, like there's chlorine in the water, and which which makes your skin. I've got a chlorine filter on my shower because yep. it makes your skin dry. Yep. Um, just every single thing it just always just adds up you're drinking filtered water I know you said that you're drinking yeah, some so of the drink ionized a, water a Kangen ionized water which is it filters out the chlorine as well I've got a chlorine filter added to that so I'm just I want it to be I want it to like restrict everything down to the healthiest I could be mm-hmm. like extreme healthy so that I could start um, once I'm healed then I can start bringing things back in Yeah. so yeah people were just saying to me you know what you're doing is crazy <laughs> but I think it was crazy because they but you could ob- quite easily turn around and go, hey, you're eating Maccas I know, three that's, times that's a week. I think that's crazy. But at the same time, now that I've healed myself, they're like, they're like, fuck, you did it. <laughs> yeah, you, you silence so, the critics. So, you know. You silence the critics. He's crazy mean, now. <laughs> nothing speaks louder than the results, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, fuck, you, yours have been on show at some of the the wildest before and afters I've yeah. ever seen, man. I'm just, I'm so happy for you. But that's yeah that's awesome yeah man. it's pretty crazy it's just getting disseminated around the world like Bear Grylls just commented like that's crazy <laughs> did he really yeah, Fuck yeah yeah that's cool that's yeah. cool but um how have you used the power of your journey your story your lessons your learnings and are you now operating a business to help other people yeah in this so, space what's so the direction the, that you're going plan. with I, at the I'm, moment I'd love to, I'm just at the moment because like... Still in its infancy. It's still in its infancy, yeah. yeah. And I've like, I've just in the last few weeks like blown up in, in followers, so... It has. Every time I look at your page, it's going <laughs> it's up, It's still man. going up, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I Instagram gave me an option to like have it as a subscription, but at the same time, people are messaging me all the time mm. and I'm, it's, I, I spend hours sometimes just answering people. So... Mm. It, it, I can't do that if I want to, uh, if I want to have a job yeah. and have them. Uh, so what I'm doing is I've I've made this kind of website and it's documenting my the steps I did to heal, and I just at the moment I'm just linking that to people so I don't have to explain the same thing over, mm-hmm. over and over. Yeah. And in terms of I would love to do this full time, so I'm I'm starting to make it, I'm starting to make more sites that, you know, if you want to have more information, you just subscribe to that and then you can get more information that way i can i can be remun- remunerated to help people yeah and i mean I've, i don't want to make it about money that's no, why but I'm it's nice it to like do now. something that you've got a passion about that's which right. you clearly yeah. do with every reason to feel passionate about that after a lifetime of suffering with a debilitating situation yeah to f- have that turned around in such a short amount of time, it just, yeah. it's, it's liberating. Really. So that, that's why I'm not really advertising that at the moment. Mm. I'm, I'm just sort of, I'm just 
I just want to get my message out there. Yeah. And and help people because, but you know, obviously, meat's expensive. But that must be an ex- yeah. exciting opportunity that you know is ahead of you. Yes, yes, I definitely am considering that in the future. Yeah, and and I'm making it now. Because what's work at the moment? Work at the moment is I'm a musician, so yeah. I. So you make a living off your music. Yeah, I, I try to. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm a wedding singer. I'm I perform in birthdays and I'm teaching music. So I, I work for myself doing that. Yeah. So. It's it pays the bills, but it's not enough. So that's why I'm trying to I'm trying to make. Surely you're this. enjoying that as well now, even more so though. That you oh probably yeah, just, dude, you know, you've got more confidence up there in front of people. Can you like talking about self worth before? Mm. Like the, the kids would always say, if I play the piano, are my fingers gonna end up rotten like yours? Like if I practice, man, kids are just straight to the yeah, point, yeah. But it's fine, and I'm mean, parents were the same. Like, Jesus, what's wrong with your hands? Mm. I mean, like I'd be playing. Um, you know, like just like if I was at the airport and I was, I'm playing, and there's a piano there, I'd like to sit down and, and play. Like that's my natural instinct. I love yep. to perform. Yeah. But people would gather around, and then they'd be like, "The my the horror of my fingers would eclipse the performance." They'd be like, "They like you could see they're smiling, but they'd be like, what the hell's wrong with these hands?'" And so I'm always in two mindsets about it. Like I wouldn't want to perform anymore because people would just look at me and think I'm just look disfigured. Mm. So, yeah. Well, man, um, let everyone who's listening know where they can find you so that we can continue to support yeah, you man. on your journey, man, because like I said, I think it's really awesome It's uh, and it's inspiring and I'm just, I'm excited to see where it goes for you, man. Yeah, so you my, some cool things ahead. My main platform is Instagram that I'm using and you can find me Bradley Marshall Official. And then from there, I've got my own YouTube channel, which I called... I call I cure my I cured my eczema, and that you can find me there, and Instagram, and I'm just putting out content all the time to change the narrative because there's so much disinformation or misinformation, and people still think that meat causes cancer when it just doesn't. Before we go, then let's just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, break that down a little bit for some of the listeners because it is again much like. Uh, I sort of mentioned the dangers of saturated fats before and the echo of the lie that people do have, you know, fear of um, red meat causing cancer. But what they don't know is, I suppose, about the the type of studies that are used in terms of the food frequency scores to sort of support these claims. So there's a guy, he's called Ansel Keys, and he's the main figure who disseminated all of this propaganda is the word that comes into my mind, but just information that's wrong that saturated fat is causing heart disease. Mm. And you can read a a massive book called um, The Clot Thickens by Dr. Malcolm Kendrick. And it's so fascinating. He talks about how LDL is vilified. It's a witty name. The Clot Thickens. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Talks about LDL, sorry. Yeah, it it talks about LDL and how that is vilified for causing atherosclerosis when really it's not the LDL. It's glycated LDL which means it's your it's the combination of eating too much sugar which then destroys the LDL glycates it yep. and then that can't be reabsorbed by the liver and so it just gets stored it just floats around in your bloodstream and then macrophages on the side of your endothelium blood vessels absorb that which then forms atheromas which then clumps on the side which then causes the the thickening the the restriction inside the blood vessels which then causes heart attacks yeah I'd argue almost triglycerides is a better indicator of those kinds of things than your LDL that's right so like when the doctors look at my blood levels and they say wow your LDL levels are so high you need to be on statins Mm because I I wanted to get blood tests Dr. Paul Mason talks about this and he says the doctors don't know unfortunately and he's a doctor himself he says the way you have to measure your own blood test by yourself so you've got to measure your triglycerides as a ratio to your HDL Mm. and if that's below one, you're fine. And a large part of your cholesterol is genetic. Yeah. yeah. For so much. Anyway. But, but in terms of, you want yeah. to talk about cancer. So, uh, yeah, if, if, if you look at the IARC report, they just base their, their cancer studies basically on, I think it was the Seventh-day Adventists, so, which is a, a vegetarian religious group. And they, they had... 800 studies, I believe, and, and from that they had 14 conclusive studies, which only one was this statistically relevant. They're all epidemiological. And mm. Paul Saladino actually talks about this. It's IARC, which is the World Health Organization, which is respectable. That's why people trust it. But all of these independent 
scientists came along and did their own research, which was vigorous. And their conclusions are the IARCS report is epidemiological, which basically means it's not clinical, it's not double blind, uh, placebo tested. It has uh, the issue of confounding evidence, like conflating two ideas which are not the same. For example, with the Seventh day Adventist study, there were these people who were insulin resist uh, resistant. This is what the author noted of that study. Those who were, had the highest levels of insulin resistance, who were obese, had the highest levels of cancer. So why are we conflating it with meat when the people who are insulin resistant and overweight were the ones that had the highest levels of cancer? So there's all this conf conflating evidence in there. So basically, the tests that are done, that are disseminated, which everyone believes, are not rigorous and they're epidemiological. Not scientific enough. 100%. So all of these other independent scientists, actually, yeah, they, they say, like, look at Hong Kong. They eat the, the most meat. They have the highest meat consumption. They also have the longest lifespan. Mm. You, can, you, you can look, if you're still, like, concerned about it, you can look at the Inuit tribes. You can look at the Maasai. They eat just meat, like Eskimos. Mm, the Maasai used to drink blood. That's, well, that's right, yeah, blood. yeah. And then... Uh, the they don't know what heart attack is. Yeah, that's right. In the, the, the Inuit tribes in the 1950s, they had um, only 30%, oh, 30 percent of America at that time was having atherosclerosis and cancer. For them, it was one percent, and all they had is a carnivore diet. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. It is. Well, there you go, guys. Few truth uh, truth bombs for you. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you again for coming Thank in, you. man. It's been really Appreciate nice it. to meet you, and um, I wish you all the best with yeah. the journey. Awesome. Good man. Thank you again. Thank you.